Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome, more importantly, to uh, this is something. This is something new. Uh, it has been requested by both members and otherwise. People have wanted to see more of the fabrication. So this will be a little quick. This will be a little dirty. The edits will probably not be as good as what you're used to seeing. Here's our good buddy baseline. The motor is out. The plate is out because he is prepping for his next test video. He's testing something. So before I wanted to get that test underway, and I don't know where this is jumping in, in the, in the, the thing of things, how much of this was done? Is that video up? I'm trying to get ahead. That was one of the unspoken resolutions of 2023. Don't make it so you don't have to make the video that morning. Hustle the edit. Anyway, we're trying to, we're trying to brief this. So before he goes out, I want to get his battery on his servo. Battery, BOS, battery on servo. A couple people in the comments have asked me, how do you do that? And I've done it a number of different ways, but with this guy, there's not a ton of room up there. So I'm going to take the battery. I'm going to take this piece of, I think it's 16. Let me, uh, let me see here. Yes, one and a half millimeter aluminum. We are going to go quick and dirty on this. Uh, I will just need this. I will need, oh, it's buried. I will need the, the, the roll of Velcro. I will need some servo tape and we will get this guy's battery on the servo in just a couple minutes. It's, it's really, it's more simple than a lot of the other stuff I do. And I'm dragging out and out longer than it needs to be. These, the little 3S 1500s are about 35 millimeters wide ish, give or take. They're a, li they're a little bit bigger and uh, depending on how old they are, they can be quite a bit bigger. So I measure that out. 35 millimeters is roughly an inch and three eighths. So I will set the saw up to one and 11 30 seconds, which to the rest of the world is about 34 millimeters. I did successfully find a smaller piece of 1 16th, if we can work a smaller piece, it's better. And the only thing that I really make sure to do, if you're cutting aluminum on a table saw, you want all the edges as deburred as possible because you don't want anything to stick as you're feeding it through the blade. That is a new blade in there. I got a new blade for Christmas, finally put it in the saw today. Uh, took a look at my old CMT blade. It was missing half a dozen teeth. That, that blade has seen some stuff and it has cut a lot of wood. So uh, what you're about to see now is someone disobeying most every safety rule, you'll notice how much safety equipment is on my table saw. My safety equipment is right here. Uh, I've been using a table saw for 30 years. Don't do what I do. I don't believe in things like like saw stop, any of that stuff, always deeper. Uh, aluminum is a very soft metal, but it also has the potential to be extremely sharp. So always deeper. I don't believe in things like saw stop because they will give people the false impression that a table saw is not potentially dangerous. A table saw in and of itself is not dangerous, but it does have the potential to be extremely dangerous. That would go through the tip of my finger as if my finger were not as easy as it cuts through air. It just went through that aluminum, which is, I mean, very thin, but with no chatter, no nothing. It just, it, it does what it's built to do, which is cut. I realize that there's over three horsepower of electric motor turning that blade, and I treat it with the respect with which it is due. And I have, knock wood, I hit myself in the head. Uh, I have never cut myself on a table saw, never. I have suffered kickbacks in the past. These things happen, and uh, that is why I push these so gingerly when they go through the saw. So there we have a rough of, of a battery holder, and now we're gonna do more ill-advised, improper use of a table saw in just a moment to make this thing into a battery holder.
Some real, some real high-tech stuff is about to take place, so uh, buckle yourselves in for this one. Battery, we need how, to know how far, and I don't want it to come up past the end of the battery. We go about... Hey, look at... Look how high-tech that is. Then we're going to give it a little space. And I usually do it this way because I want the gap between the edges a little shorter. Than, I mean, I want, I want this span to be a little bit longer than the battery, and I want the ends to be a little shorter than the battery is vertically. And I did look at it. I mean, you can put them in this way if you really tight on space, but from the look of uh, baseline, he is going to fit. So I'm going to space it a little. I'm going to mark that right there. And then I need to mark this again, but I want to go quite short on this side. So I'm going to go to right about there. All right, then we're going to cut this off. So that part's going to get cut off. And then this part is going to get whittled because we have wires. And I am just going to guesstimate. I'm going to say about there and about there. We're just going to flip-flop it on the table saw so the two sides are going to come out even. But I'm going to cut that off, and then I'm going to I'm going to do unsafe table saw operations. Actually, I can do this one a little safer. I can I, yeah. I was going to go super unsafe, but I can do this one a little safe. Well, I'll show you the semi-safe method. There are limits to how much uh, lack of safety I will exhibit, so uh, you don't get to see how I cut that off. Uh, if I deem it more unsafe than the stuff I usually do, uh, you can just imagine. Blade height has been set to, just I just picked one of the sides and set the blade height to it. It's pretty simple. You line, you line the mark up with the teeth on the blade. Then, this is, uh, you know, they have illegal Lego operations. You're never supposed to use a sliding, a T-bar, with the fence, like what you see right there. Don't, don't do this. It's, it's very rough, right? But still much cleaner than if I had cut it out on a bandsaw. And what you're not going to see is me clean this up the rest of the way. Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's additionally unsafe table saw operation. If anyone is at all curious as to what goes on the sh in the shadows, let's just say it's, it's fingies very close to the blade to get that cut off. Now, you could do a bandsaw and a file and achieve similar results but you would not re achieve those similar results nearly as quickly. And I am impatient, I guess, above all else. Very high-tech method of bending. Easy to bend that line because we're, uh, we're cropped off. Look at this. This almost looks like a part, does it not? And uh, why he is notched in is a boop. We check our spacing on that, and sure enough, indeed, we lost a little bit. So I will make a second half uh, roughy mark there, because I only get one shot at this. Yeah, right about there. Now for this, we will eyeball it a little more accurately, just because I want to get that tab in the front bent straight. If I were smart, I would have taken a uh, either a combination square or something to it to make sure I have a straight line, but that looks, that looks good enough for what we're doing. Clamp it, wamp it, and then the, uh, we, join, we join hands together. Went a little too far. We join hands together for the moment of truth. That's a battery tray. Well, it's, it's most of a battery tray. 
what I've got to do is there's a combination sander right behind me. Uh, we got to take these knuckle removers off all of them. So I'll take those off. I will deburr it up again, and then we'll make the strap. We will get this thing on the battery. Uh, I will sand up. I, I did it right. I did it right, though. Uh, the side that's a little nicer is facing up, so I can hit it with the sander on the back, you know, a little more adhesion for the tape. Get this cleaned up, and it's ready to go in. Then we get the strap, well, the holder in place so that we can make the strap. And I would say the, the only problem with these little guys is that for whatever reason, the people that make these slightly bigger guys they don't take batteries like this into account. They they assume we're all going to run either big 4,000 shorties or full-blown 5,000, 6,000 packs. And I'm not going to put a one-pound battery in one of these. I'm going to put a four-ounce battery in these. So when you get a battery strap like this Vanquish, they're all about eight inches long. And it will strap across this and this pack. But the, the, the end of it will be hanging way down. Then you get to try to cram your fingers in here to get the end of the strap. So I want a strap that just works. So I use the comes on a big roll like this. Comes with a bunch of buckles. I think it's like 16 feet of this stuff. I usually just cut myself off a big chunk of it. I usually use blind rivets. So I'll put a rivet right through right there so that it doesn't come undone. This one, I just basically set it on the bench, went like this. And it's going to be, uh, uh, for this attachment, I'm going to be clamping it under. I'm going to use two strips of servo tape to attach this to the top of the servo. And this guy will be fitted in place. But before we can fit that in place, before we can put the tape on it, we've got to, we have to make sure our clearances are good. So generally, as an axle moves up, it moves backwards. It's just kind of the geometry thing. So effectively, at full droop, I want it at full droop. I want to see where it touches. So we're up against the bumper mount, and then as it moves back, it's out of the way. And because we hope for symmetricalness, symmetricality, I'm just going to put it centered on the battery. So what I will do is I'll make myself two little... I can get I can get a little closer right there. I will make myself two little marks. And those two little marks are the front of the servo case. So then what I should have done, but I was too busy. That is the front of the servo case and that is the back of the servo case. So that's how much room I have to get to get my business in place. You'll see how I do the tape here in a moment. So I've got the strap. I've got my strap pre-cut. That still gives me seven-ish millimeters on either side. This is one of the rigs and one of the setups that I, I do genuinely prefer that there was some sort of just off-the-shelf option because as you can see, that's a much narrower strap. And if I had the ability to use this one, I can get a lot more tape on either side, but I can't do that here. So I am just going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it how I always do it, which is we're gonna grab our cloth and our bottle of what is potentially the last denatured alcohol in the entire state of California, because for whatever reason, they decide to ban it, but you can still go to a Lowe's and buy acetone. So uh, I have no, I have no idea what the thinking was there. Denitrate alcohol is a fantastic cleaner for stuff like this, for prepping for things like tape. This is not servo tape. This is, of course, my favorite Clear Gorilla. Although the price of Clear Gorilla has effectively skyrocketed recently, I went and looked at a roll, and I think it was about nine dollars for a roll. So it might not, at this point. It might be cheaper to go back to buying, like, yeah, racing servo tape. But yeah, as you see, it's it's quite a bit, it's quite a bit wider. I'm not even going to use all of it. What I'm going to attempt to do is cut, a, and then usually the ends are a little better 
in the middle. So we got one strip. We go just inside the marks if possible. If it hangs over a little, it hangs over a little. Boy, cutting on camera. Ordinarily, that would be a little less hinky. Right there, strap should just about fit in between the two of those. Almost, almost. We can. Tr we have two. Op we have two options here. We could trim it down, or we could not trim it down. And I think I will choose not trim it down. There's, of course, then the third option, which is trim the little edge on the strap to fit the tape. Again, this is not a problem with an off-the-shelf strap. You can get straps for drones, which will fit because they're made for those really tiny little like 3S and 4S packs. The problem is with the straps for drones is like a two pack of them is like nine, ten dollars And I think I got 16 feet of this for about 10 bucks. I'm gonna, I, I have to, I have to concentrate and focus here. I think I stuck the tape onto the Velcro strap. No, I think, I, I think it's, I think I got it. I think it's okay. I did triple check to make sure that it was facing the correct direction so that when I pull over, because when I trimmed it, it's now effectively locked in there and I, I can't, I can't remove it without popping the whole holder off. So I will probably leave a little bit longer of a tail on this one just because it'll be easier to grab. And as you can see, when you're working in this kind of confined, there we go, but not too long. We want long enough, but not too long. Okay, pull that all the way up. I will go to around, yeah, I could have cut that, uh, I could have cut that much shorter when I was fabricating it, but what, and if I had the rivet, okay, if I could find the damn blind rivets, I would fold a, the, the tip of this over and make a little tab at the end with the rivet in it, so it's really easy to pull it out. So instead, I will just, well, so elegant. We'll cut it right there. It's a little bit of a, a wonky angle, so we'll cut the little wonky angle off. And then for no one other than myself, I like to, I like to nip the little corners off. And there you have it. The battery, the BOS, the battery on servo. And it looks like, it looks like we're not gonna have any issues. Seems like everything moves fine. So that is a, a fair, decent chunk. Oh, how do they get that in there? Oh, yeah. See, because they use they heat weld, they heat weld. I've oft I've oft been tempted, and I might have to test it out. Can I just like soldering iron that? I've got wood burners too. Can I just like take the wood burner tip and be like, and just try to heat those together? I I mean I own a sewing machine, but I. I don't know how to sew. So we can ditch some weight. I think there's like a brace under it. Oh, neat, yeah. We gotta, we gotta leave that guy in there, right? And actually that bit right there would be really handy for putting on a, if you're putting on a half cab, it's a pretty good attachment point there. Yeah, it's pretty nice. There it is. The first installment of what my brain came up with while I was making it, the Crawler Canyon Fab Lab. This is how this is how we make stuff. That took probably 30 minutes overall. And I think actually, I mean I'm I'm pretty happy with that. It definitely doesn't come anywhere near the bar, and that is all unsprung weight now. So when you see this guy next, which should be really soon after this one, uh, in the test sequence that he'll be running. He's gonna have battery on servo and that should help the performance overall. Easy stuff, right? Thanks for watching everybody. The usual stuff, the yidda, the yada, the like, the comment, the subscribe, we have memberships, etc. You know what? Uh, I gotta get to the testing for this one. I got other stuff to make, I got other stuff to do. Let's get on with our lives, right? Have a good one, everybody.